Hi guys, so today we're going to discuss how to integrate Snowflake TV using Spring Boot. So currently, um, as you can see, or maybe you haven't heard, uh, there is no Spring Boot support for Snowflake database, right? Uh, again, compared to other uh, established databases like Oracle or MySQL, which is very compatible with uh, Spring Boot libraries, but for Snowflakes they don't have right. So Snowflakes, by the way, is uh, is a data warehousing uh, SaaS application. So it's available online, of course. Um, um, so uh, to move forward with our tutorial, uh, maybe we can start by going to the Spring Boot initializer. So uh, going to this site, it's a bit more easier to create a template project using the Spring Boot. I prefer using Gradle because it's for me it's really easier uh, to read and uh, compose a project with Gradle. And um, but also sometimes I use Maven, but I just prefer Gradle this time. Java of course, and just use the defaults like. For now, let's use Java 8 because that's the version of Java that is installed on my local machine. So let's say com that snowflakes demo and snowflakes. Cool. Um. Yeah. What else do we have? So. Um. So we need to add some dependencies in here um, so I'm just gonna base on the existing project that I have created already so in my existing project I use Spring Boot Starter, uh, Starter Data JPA and uh, that's it for the Spring so let's just add those modules then <coughs> that one then let's generate the project so once the project is generated you can see it here um, by the way I'm using Ubuntu so if you're not using Ubuntu it's pretty much the same thing you just have to go to the downloads folder and then you have to unzip this thing in my case I wanted to unzip in a specific folder so I want to use terminal and then let me see um, uh, see Upwork yeah because I also do Upwork right so let's see um, I want to move that thing here so demo downloads that demo that zip Sorry. Yep, so it's here. Then let's unzip that thing. Cool. And then the next thing we need to do is to import this thing. So I'm using IntelliJ to develop Java projects, so might as well try to do the same thing. Um, yep, okay. So I wanted to go to that folder where I unzip the project demo so let's import that thing yeah just unmark everything let's try a new window okay so guys once you have imported the project to your IntelliJ uh, you have to make sure that uh, your IntelliJ is uh, loading the project using the correct JDK version, right? So in my case, uh, for some reason, the IntelliJ uses the S another SDK, which is Open JDK 17. That's not what I wanted. I, ju I just wanted to use the 1.8 version of JDK. So you have to make sure it stays that way. 
um, and then after that you will get uh, this project template from Spring Initializer which is really cool because everything here is already set up everything looks good okay so now as you can see we already have uh, this dependency right theta jpa which we usually use to uh, work with uh, databases like mysql sql server oracle db postgres but in this case in this in this tutorial i want to use um another sql vendor which is snowflake so this uh, for us to do that we need to uh, the solution is not really that straightforward we need to do some tweaking around the dependencies first so let's take a look at my other project so in here as you can see the spring gpa i excluded the apache tomcat module uh, i have to remove that because it's causing some issues in the build <coughs> that i don't need for snowflakes so let's remove that thing so here cool and then another thing we need is this one also we need to make sure that this thing is in our dependencies because that includes auto configuration stuff the IOC inversion of control stuff it's there so that's why we need that <coughs> and then after that we also need the snowflake dependencies so don't worry I'm going to show you the I'm going to share the source code in the links below but you should also try to enjoy the video um, <coughs> okay should be here cool what else do we need so we also need this connecting pooling mechanism so that the gpa uh, will be able to connect to database uh, using a connection pool All right let's put it here um uh, of course a guava uh, this is more like a spring stuff so let's just take this Okay, we don't need the okay HTTP. This is for another demo that I will be making um, uh, by the next day. So let's just use this thing. Yeah, and then another thing I I probably like to use is of course the Lombok. I could have added this in the Spring Initializer, but I kind of miss it. Anyway, it's not really an issue. You can just copy and paste it here do it that way and then make sure that you also uh, tell the griddle to enable annotation processor so you do it this way here okay cool and then you have to hit load griddle changes okay so once done you were able to load the changes uh, be able to see the project dependencies compile class paths here you will see all of the dependencies is already loaded and i think that's good that's good yeah it's here um snowflakes it's here okay cool the next thing we need to do is uh to write the code right so uh as i said earlier it's not as straightforward to do that in Spring Boot because the current um, there is a library of course that the Snowflakes provides as you see here the Snowflakes JDBC and Snowflakes Common the problem is that uh, they're not uh, friendly or compatible with the um, Spring Boot auto configuration or should I say they are not very compatible with the Spring Boot starter data GPA so the way the the way the Spring Boot Starter Data JPA auto configures the data source doesn't fit for the needs of the Snowflakes JDBC uh, library. So I, I have to do some tweaking on how to create the data source bean, right? So that's what I'm gonna show you right now. Uh, for this one okay so I already have provided I already have the code in my other project I just have to 
take that down here so okay so I needed this thing snowflakes basic data source the standard so what this thing really is I just have to extend the snowflake basic data source so by default uh, the snowflake database uh, creates this thing right but this thing even the even the snowflake library doesn't actually uh, is, is actually unable to load all the properties which includes the password the the url the database so something's really wrong so i have to uh, do some divine intervention intervention between there so what i did is just, i have to extend the snowflake basic data source and then explicitly create the connection i just have to override the method get connection right so the get connection can only accept uh, username and password and from there i should be able to generate the connection but the properties it's not just about it's not just about the username and password so there are properties needed so let's try to understand the, the properties that snowflakes needed for you to be, create the connection so you, you need the pass username password account warehouse db schema right so this one is um optional you don't need it unless you're mfa and snowflakes is enabled but i wouldn't really advise it because it's really a hassle to enable it during development and so the jdbc url looks like this yeah, your account and then your region and then of course all the properties and then that's how you create the connection using the username and password the url and then the properties okay so once once done um you have to i just have to go to my main class which is the where, where the spring boot application annotation is present and then from there you just have to create the bin data source right so this is where the magic happens it's like you are overriding the data source that the spring boot auto configuration is supposed to create right based on the libraries present but there is no libraries but the spring boot auto configuration doesn't actually detect the snowflakes libraries right so you have to uh, acquire it manually this way so you have to provide the properties and then create the data source using the extended snowflake basic data source class that i have created and then that's it the data source will be wired and auto wired to to all the other classes that needs data source Okay, so then let's do that, right? I think that's what we what we want here. Um, okay, put it here. Okay, and then next we of course we need this basic data source thing. Okay, so now once you are done. Um, Creating the bin, for example, in our demo application class, I've already created the bin, right, of the data source based on this class that I just have copied to my other project. So basically, this is creating a data source for Snowflake's uh, data warehouse. I also created an, a test object. Basically, this is just an entity. Um, I have defined uh, this as a table under schema under catalog in life mark and then the table name is test object um, so this is just pretty basic stuff just to prove that uh, our data source is able to connect to snowflakes and able to auto create uh, this table or entity so I also provided I added some of the configuration in the application properties file so this is the basic login so this is the real thing uh, configuration for the snowflake database so you need the account the warehouse the database name 
the schema usually it's just public the username and the username the region where the warehouse data warehouse is hosted and then the password so my password is just here um, what if I add let's add environment variable cool oh, apply okay <clears throat> so this part in here are GPA stuff so as you can see the database that I'm using is SQL server the reason I'm using SQL server is that there is no direct support for Snowflake's database server for some reason SQL server is the closest possible um, server that I can use that which is compatible to Snowflake's so just use that and you should be fine and I use this DDL auto so that once we run the program it will auto create the test object entity as a table in the snowflakes that proves uh, that proves our theory that I can connect to snowflakes and can create can execute DDL statements and all this other stuff in here is also needed yeah that one is also needed I'll explain to you why later um okay cool so once done okay let's, let's try to uh, run this thing okay I think so once done you have provided the we have added the test objects identity class so this will prove uh, that the DL is executed and create and the table is created to snowflakes this is the data source with the, the modified data source class which uh, we have explicitly created the connection details together with the explicit properties that the Snowflakes requires us. The demo application class and this one is uh, the custom identifier generator. This is needed in the test object entity class so that I can auto generate the long ID uh, using the mailis. Right, don't ask me why right now, but yeah, that's cool. So uh, let's just uh, try to execute this thing okay so as you can see it's uh, dropping the table if there's anything created already and then creating the table again so that's the reason why it's doing that way is because I, I said in my property spring GPA hibernate detail auto that create so this means uh, whenever the program starts it will drop any tables that is already there and then recreate it so this proves that I can I can execute TDL right and that that means I am connected to the snowflake server right okay uh, just to prove that I was able to connect to snowflakes uh, from my springboard application uh, I can also provide you some I can also provide you the dashboard for that for that. So I'm just gonna show you the dashboard for Snowflakes and see if the test object the entity was created. So um, Snowflake is really for data warehousing stuff. Uh, usually, this is used for um, big data analysis. For okay, so we're here. Um, see, okay, it's here, right? The test object, as you can see. Uh, yep, there it is. So currently, we have zero rows because we're not persisting any data to it. We have the ID. We have that name so that's good it proves that we're able to connect to our snowflakes from our spring gpa application right so i'm what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna push this code to github and i'll provide a link below uh, in return just please subscribe and hit like thank you so much